when this man speaks, people are instantly healed. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet, the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, and I'm with a good friend of mine, Dr. Norman Robertson. When this man speaks, miracles occur. Norman, tell me of one miracle that comes to mind. We were just in Maine a few weeks ago. A man from Boston, he now lives in, in Maine, in Bangor, Maine, in a wheelchair for 10 years. He was hit by a dumpster, one of those trucks, a big truck, 10 years ago, left totally paralyzed in a wheelchair for the past 10 years. I prayed for him on the Monday night. The power of God touched him. He came out of the wheelchair, and he's been out ever since. He pushed the wheelchair right out of the church, came back the next night, testified without the wheelchair, totally healed because of God's power. Now, I, I've, I've seen you speak, and you hear words from God and speak them out. Uh, how does it sound when you hear these words? As a Christian, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, and the Holy Spirit's a real person. He has a real voice. And he can speak to us. And so the voice of God speaks to me and directs me who to pray for, what to pray for. Sometimes it's a still small voice. Other times I call it the amplified voice. It comes with more authority. But the Holy Spirit, the wonderful thing about the Holy Spirit is he wants to heal people. I was sharing with you before the program that back in 1995, I was preaching in Tampa, Florida. And one morning before the service, as I was praying in my hotel room, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, like a muddy wind, blew in the hotel room. I just, I had to hold on to a piece of furniture. Otherwise, I mean, I mean, fell over the, under the power of God. And the Spirit of God said to me, Were you praying? What, what was going on? That this I was praying. I was, in, I was actually worshiping the Lord. And, just and, and you're telling me that there was a force that almost knocked you over? Sometimes it happens to me, yes. Okay, go ahead. God's real and His presence is so real. His power is so real. <laughs> and so the Holy Spirit said to me, I want to heal people. I want people free of disease free of sickness and free of physical maladies because I love them. And then he said this, healing is what I do. You know, motor mechanics, they work on cars. School teachers, they teach at school. But the Holy Spirit is in the business of healing sick bodies. That's what he does. I'd like to know when this started, how this started with you. I mean, you, you, the first time you prayed for someone, tell me. Well, we have to go all the way back 25 years ago. You know. 1999 right now, but 1974, I got born again, saved, became a Christian in uh, the city of Durban in South Africa. And it was a powerful conversion, and the Lord just made himself so real to me. Well, and you were telling me that the man told what happened to him, and that just thrust you into this, this realm. What happened to that man? Well, I, what happened, I was, I was a religious person. I go to church four times a year. Christmas, Easter, weddings and funerals. Um, not a believer, not a Christian, but I was playing squash one day at the local YMCA, and this young man came up and spoke to me. I recognized who he was. He was a rock star, a former rock mm -hmm. star in South Africa, big name. And he began to talk to me about Jesus. And the more he talked to me about Jesus, there was a supernatural presence, an anointing behind his words. And when he gave me his testimony, told me how the Lord had appeared to him in his hotel room supernaturally. He was about to commit suicide, and Jesus' supernatural appearance changed his whole life. Did you believe that Jesus um, came to this guy who was just a rock star? Well, I had some questions, but what I could not question was the, was the power and the conviction and mm -hmm. the authority behind his words. And I'll be honest with you, because of that, that uh, story, I, I couldn't sleep for three days and nights. I, mm -hmm. I wrestled just, it, this, the presence of God was upon me. And later the following week, I went with him to a full gospel crusade and gave my life to Jesus. And from that time, I became a believer, I became a Christian, and my whole life changed. The first time you prayed for someone, tell me about that. It was three months later. And I was actually at a barbecue. And uh, the person I prayed for was a dog. <laughs> a dog? Yeah. Here's what happened. We were, having, we were having a barbecue at a Christian 
uh, some fellowship. And I noticed at the barbecue that this, this family, they had a pet, a bulldog, and his left eye kept blinking the whole night. And finally I said to the lady, I said, lady, what's wrong with your dog? She said, oh, the dog was hit by a car four weeks ago and was left with this nervous twitch in the left eye and is totally blind. And I said, lady, we're gonna pray for your dog right now. And she was a, she'd been a Christian for many years, many, many years, went to a full gospel church, was an elder's wife. And she almost fell over when I said, I wanna pray for your dog. And she said, pray for the dog? I said, yes. I said, I was reading in the Bible that Jesus said, lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. I said, your dog looks sick to me. See, when Jesus said, lay hands upon the sick, that's talking about sick Christians, sick non-believers, anybody or anything that's sick. Jesus said, we have the authority in his name to pray and lay hands upon them. So you didn't hear a word to do it. You just saw a sick dog and wanted to help the dog. Began to act on faith. Believe the New mm -hmm. Testament. Believe the Word of God. And so I laid my hands upon my wife and I. We laid hands upon this dog. I mean, the blinking, winking, blind eyed bulldog. <laughs> I can picture the blinking <laughs> boy. <laughs> and, he, and here's what happened. The following Sunday morning in church, this lady ran up to me, ecstatic. We had prayed for the dog on the Monday night previously. Mm -hmm. And she said the dog was no longer, no longer had the twitch, no longer linking anymore. She took it back to the animal doctor on the Saturday morning and the doctor was, the vet was absolutely amazed. He said the dog has got complete sight restored to that blind eye. What did you think about that? I realized immediately that God was in the business of healing the sick. Just like he did in Bible days, he wants to heal the sick today. God is such a good God. He, you know, he loves mankind. And one of the ways that, one of the ways, one of the many ways mm -hmm. that God reveals his great love and great power is through healing the sick. Sometime during this telecast, I really believe that at some time during this telecast... Well, there's someone right now. Right now? Right now. Wh what's going on? Carpal tunnel condition in their left wrist. There's several viewers. Mm -hmm. they, have a, they have pain in their wrists, especially the left wrist, but I'm going to pray for both wrists. If you're watching right now, if you've ever had any kind of pain or you have pain right now in your left wrist, carpal tunnel in both wrists, right now in the name of Jesus, God's power is right there going through the TV set to heal and remove the pain and the affliction from your wrists. You're being healed right now. If you just begin to move that wrist, the left one, the right one, you'll see that the power of God, the Holy Spirit, is healing you right there in Jesus' name. Well, that was a practical demonstration of what I said God was going to do. I said that by faith. And the moment it came out of my mouth, a word from God came out of Norman's mouth. Now, I also heard a word, and I don't even have a tinge of reservation that you are healed from Car Carpal's Tunnel, and you are healed with a neck condition. If you will, I mean, I, uh, uh, Norman, I heard that is clearly, uh, if you'll move your head just like this, bend it over if you had a pain. Don't do it if you didn't have a pain, you know what I mean? If you had a, and, and, and a headache has just gone, and backs are being, oh, this is going to be an explosive show. Backs are being healed right now in Jesus' name. Don't you dare go away. There is a demonstration of the reality of the living God. Be right back after this. We'll return with Sid Roth and It's Supernatural right after this. Hello YouTube, Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word, it means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. I'm speaking to Dr. Norman Robertson, and we just had a demonstration of the supernatural. Uh, one of these days, we're gonna have a whole bank of telephone operators, and you'll be able to call in because I know that large numbers of people were instantly healed. Dr. Robertson, tell me, just because I'm curious, what you consider the most outstanding miracle that has occurred. Uh, as you've been teaching or speaking? We've seen so many miracles, some awesome displays of the power of God. We've had people healed of AIDS, 
Medi AIDS, medically there's documented. No, there, there, there is no cure for AIDS. That's right, but Jesus has got the you cure for AIDS. You can stall it, but you have had medically verified of AIDS. One time in Greensboro, North Carolina, a black lady, this was three years ago, 1996. But the most awesome miracle for me personally mm -hmm. was a crusade we, were, we had in San Jose, Costa Rica. It was a Friday night service. There was about 7,000 people in the meeting. We had preached till about 11 o'clock at night, saw the power of God heal all kinds of conditions. As I was leaving the building, a man tapped me in the shoulder, weeping. He had a little girl with him with a beautiful pink dress on. It was her sixth birthday. That particular day was her sixth birthday. She was born deaf and dumb. Hmm. So since birth, never heard, never spoke. And the, her father said, would I please pray a special prayer for her? It was her birthday. And I felt the compassion of God, the love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit rise up out of me. And I placed my fingers in her, in her deaf ears, prayed in Jesus' name. I placed my finger in her mouth, prayed in Jesus' name. And instantly, the power of the Holy Spirit came upon her and her ears opened up. You could see the reaction. And she began to speak words, not intelligible words, the next day, she came back to the meeting. Her speech began to improve. On the Sunday morning, her father and her were able to testify together and talk about what Jesus had done. A powerful, awesome miracle. Deaf and dumb, six years of age, a special prayer on her birthday. God healed her. Mm. Now, there, there are people that are watching us right now, and they're sick, and they want to be healed. And you did not speak the name of the condition that they had. Is there hope for them? It certainly is. God is in the business of healing people of all, from all backgrounds, all walks of life. I don't care who you are, realize that God loves you. And because He loves you, His mercy, His compassion, and His goodness, and His great power reaches out to touch you today. The fact there's people watching right now, you heard me talk about a little child that was sick. There's some viewers right now, your children are sick. And the power of God right now, I rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ that artistic condition. Right now, I, I speak to, to children right now who've got learning dysfunctions, ADD, dyslexia. There's an anointing right now, right now, flowing through this TV set. If you just lay your hands upon your children right now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, children be healed by the power of God. What is really going on when you say, in Jesus' name? I notice you say that a lot. How come? What's going on in, in the invisible world? I believe the Bible, and I believe the Bible is not man's revelation, it's God's revelation. And the supernatural revelation that we have, the Bible, tells us how God wants us to pray, and the fact that He has given us the power and the right to use His name. All right, give me some specific scriptures to prove what you just said from the Bible. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, tells us that the name of Jesus Christ is above all other names. Mark chapter 16, verse 18, Jesus said, In my name, lay hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. So the authority to heal is not from me, it's from God. I want you to realize this, and the viewers are watching, right, I'm not the healer. God is the one who heals. Jesus Christ is the healer today. The Holy Spirit is the one who heals, but He heals through faith in Jesus' name. And so as we exercise faith in Jesus' name, and speak that name. The name of Jesus is more powerful than cancer. So, so what in the invisible realm, what exactly occurs when you say the name of Jesus and put your hand on someone? What is actually happening? The name of Jesus Christ releases the power of God. The power of God through the Holy Spirit is so real that as we begin to exercise a trust, a belief, a faith in God's power, and begin to speak the name of Jesus with faith. It, I'm not talking about some kind of a religious ritual you just mm -hmm. say in Jesus' name. I'm talking about you have to have faith in that name. You have to release belief and faith in that name. And so when you speak faith in Jesus' name, the power of God is released to manifest miracles, deliverance, healing, and answers to prayer today. See, the wonderful thing about God, He's a God who hears our prayers and answers our prayers. Um, let me put you on the spot. Tell me one dramatic prayer that you prayed 
not necessarily healing, personal, right. that God answered. All right, back, back in 1992, we were having some problems regarding, we just moved to the United States mm -hmm. from South Africa, and we were having some complications with our green card application. I mean, just a whole lot of bureaucracy and red tape. And so my wife and I, the Bible says in Matthew 18, that there's an anointing and agreement. There's, there's prayer power released when two agree. And so we brought the whole situation concerning a green card that was just seemed to be making no headway. We agreed in prayer on a Tuesday, Tuesday evening, and agreed in prayer together for the release of the power of God to bring us favor and cause the green card to come and the process to speed up and accelerate. The following week, we got a call from the INS, the immigration department said, we want to interview you, you've got the green card. Are you special? Is there something special about you that's causing these God to move on your behalf? Why is this? Everybody's special to God. God, God loves everybody. In fact, every viewer who's watching right now, I want to encourage you. If you're watching right now, whoever you are, wherever you are, God loves you. You have significance. That, 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 that let, candidly, it's a cliche almost. You really believe that? I do believe that because I know in my own life from personal testimony that when I came to Jesus Christ and I became a believer, He healed me of, a, of an asthmatic condition I'd had for 21 years. He delivered me from, from the addiction of cigarettes. Uh, so many things He set me free from. The, the Word of God tells us who the Son of God sets free is free indeed. Either Jesus can set you free or He can't. And so when you put your trust in Him and put your faith in Him, He's the real deal. He shows up, He comes on the scene, and He delivers. I like that. Jesus is the real deal. And you're going to see the real deal when we come back. I believe many of you are going to have manifestations of physical healings. I can't wait. Be right back. In case you missed that, a mensch is a human being. And as far as I'm concerned, I thought I was a mensch. I left my wife, I left my daughter, I left my job. I, I, I didn't care about anyone except me. And then I had an encounter with the devil. And I have since come to find out that anything that is evil, that is destroying, is demonic. And as Dr. Robertson and I were speaking, he stated the name of Jesus was stronger than the demonic. For me, God restored my marriage. He restored my health. He restored everything about me. As a matter of fact, I'm one of these people that the Bible calls a brand new creation. Speaking of new, Dr. Robertson, will God do creative miracles? Certainly. God's not only the healing God, He's the miracle God. We had a meeting just this year up in Greensboro, North Carolina, a church called the Cathedral of His Glory. There was a lady, it was a two-week meeting we had. We had morning and night meetings for two weeks. The last week in February, first week in March. A lady was in those meetings who had, tumor, had a tumor in her breast, her upper left breast, and she had breast cancer, was under the, the treatment of, of several physicians. One was a cancer specialist. She kept on coming to the meetings. I think the third or the, sec, or the third or the fourth night I prayed for her, God's power came on her so powerfully, she lay on the floor the entire service. Couldn't get off the floor. She felt this liquid fire. Sometimes the anointing of the Holy Spirit will come on you like a warm glow, an intense heat. Other times it's like a burning fire. And she testified afterwards, shared afterwards, that she felt this fire go right through her body. The very next morning, there was no trace of the tumor. It had disappeared. She went back to see the doctors. They pronounced her well by the power of God. Something is going on right now. There's something going on in the spirit right now. And I believe that if you will trust the Word of God, He sent His Word and healed them. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all His benefits. He's forgiven all of my sins and healed all, all of my diseases. Dr. Robertson, something special is going on in the spirit right now. Would you pray? I certainly will. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, 
I release the power of the Holy Spirit right now into every home, into every person watching right now. I command the sickness, the disease, the pain, the physical maladies that they've suffered to go right now. I command sickness to go and healing to come now in Jesus' name. Right now you're watching this program and you have got someone here with, with, with a growth, a growth in the upper right breast. Receive your healing right now by the power of God. Anybody watching with warts or growths or knots in their body, I curse those growths. I command the tumors to go and release the power of God now. Be totally healed. There's at least five people watching right now this program. You have whiplash because of, of car accidents. You've been involved in some car wreck. You've got whiplash. I speak to the whiplash. I speak to that accident that took place and concern your neck and shoulders. I command the neck to be healed, the back to be healed, the shoulders to be healed now by the power of God. Healing comes now in the name of Jesus. Right now, every person, if you're sick in your body, just lay your hand upon your body right now. God's power, the love of God, the mercy of God, the compassion of God, and the love and the power of the Holy Spirit right now is reaching out to you by His anointing in your living room to heal your body. I say be healed now in the mighty name of Jesus. God loves you. Jesus loves you. Be healed now in His name. There, there's something, something going on right now in the Spirit. There are many of you that have been healed. But you know something? That physical healing is not going to help your broken heart. Your marriage is destroyed or about ready to be destroyed. Your children are in drugs. You, 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 you don't know where to look for the finances. God says, all things are possible. That's not my word. That's not Norman's word. That's God's word. I, something very special is going on in the spirit right now. All things are possible. These are the words of God. All things are possible to those who believe. First, you've got to get rid of the obstacle separating you from the love of God. That obstacle is called sin. You say, well, I'm a good person. I'm sure you are. But compared to the holiness of God, all of your good deeds is as an unclean woman in God's sight. Start with the Ten Commandments. Are you honoring your mother and father? Are you having sex outside of marriage? Homosexuality? Lesbianism? Are you involved in the New Age? Are you involved in things that God calls an abomination? Fortune tellers? A seances? Are you lying? Are you stealing? Are you coveting? Are you gossiping? All of those things. Are you murdering? He said, I never murdered anyone. Jesus said, if you hate it in your heart, it'll eventually become a manifestation in the natural. Do you have unforgiveness deep, deep, deep inside of you. You can't let go. Yes, you can, because all things are possible to those who believe. I'm going to pray with you right now, and I'll tell you something. You don't know when your end will come. Now is the time. Not right now. Right this moment. Pray out loud with me and mean it to the best of your ability. Repeat after me. Dear God, I am a sinner. I'm so sorry. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I turn from my sins. I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. And I am clean. Thank you. It's so good to be clean. And now that I am clean, I make Jesus my Messiah and Lord. Lord Jesus, come inside of me. Take over my life. I've made a mess of it. I turn it over to you. If you said that prayer and meant it, 
He's living in you. You have no past. And ask him to fill you with his spirit right now. Norman, would you pray for people to be filled very quickly with the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. Yes, there's, all, there's people right now watching you are depressed. I break that depression now off of your life. Be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Release right now in Jesus' name the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I speak strength into you. Someone's eyes are being healed right now. Someone's hip is being healed. All things are yours in Jesus' name. You will never, ever be the same. Something wonderful has just happened to you. God does love you. He really does. Really, really does.